A lot of our reality has certainly mimicked the Jetsons cartoon with its futuristic flair. So for a long time, we thought the next step in travel technology would be flying cars. But it's clear the real future of travel is all about the loop, the hyperloop, as it's being called. And our Clayton Sandell caught up with the first two humans to give it a whirl. 20 miles outside Las Vegas, Nevada, in this tube running through a dusty desert, a cutting edge technology and two people inside it just made history. Three, two, one, launch. Josh Geigel and Sara Lukian just became the first humans to ride in something called the Virgin Hyperloop. That was so good! What kind of looks like a ride on Space Mountain is actually a type of futuristic transportation for most of us, unless you live in the fictional country of Wakanda. That's magnetic levitation, right? Obviously. Maglev train tech has been around for decades, but the Hyperloop supercharges it. Imagine traveling nonstop at up to 670 miles per hour, above land or underground. This is Hyperloop. It works by putting the passenger capsule inside a sealed tube. Hyperloop One's unique technology uses magnetic levitation to guide and lift the pod off the track. Nearly all of the air inside the Hyperloop tube is removed using a series of vacuum pumps. This effectively creates our own sky inside the tube, as if you are quietly flying at 200,000 feet above sea level. This reduces drag, so only the smallest amount of electricity is needed to achieve extraordinary speeds. The company says the Hyperloop would drastically cut the travel time between cities, from hours to minutes. From Los Angeles, Las Vegas, you're looking somewhere between about 30, 40 minutes. Top speed on that might be in excess of about 500 miles an hour. You get up to speed, you get straight from downtown Los Angeles to downtown Las Vegas, and something that you could pop over for lunch for, pop over for a quick gamble. Or a show. Or a show. <laughs> Geigel, the company's chief technology officer, and Lukian, the director of passenger experience, were the willing guinea pigs. It's a bit like an aircraft taking off on the runway. We went fairly fast, so the last test we went about 107 miles an hour. The biggest thing that you noticed is Sara and I didn't walk into the vehicle in spacesuits. We're not astronauts. We're not astronauts. We walked in in clothes like this. We got in, we sat down, and most importantly, we got out. The company also has to convince future customers they are safe, confined in a sealed tube at high speeds, with occasional noise and shaking. Sound familiar? People are already traveling in an enclosed vehicle in a low pressure environment at very high speed. And those are airplanes. The purpose of this test was really, if it's not safe for me, it's not safe for Sarah, it's not safe for anyone else. The space age idea of traveling by tube has been around at least since the Jetsons. You call, sir? <laughs> Today's technology still needs more testing and development, government approvals, and lots and lots of money. But if everything stays on track or floating just above it, it may not be long before several competing companies are offering tickets to ride all over the world. Whether it be in India, whether it be in, in Europe, or even in the Middle East, I think there's a huge opportunity for multiple systems to, to be up and running by the end of the decade. And that's certainly what we're going after. Virgin says once it can go from two passengers a day to, say, 20,000, running faster and cleaner than commercial airliners, Hyperloop technology might fundamentally change life as we know it. We're talking about a technology that can connect cities as if they were metro stops. And that has tremendous implications for where you choose to live, where you choose to work, where you get your education or your health care. And we're really thinking about the ways that we can inspire ourselves and others during what's been a very difficult year. We're doing it. We're making progress despite everything towards a better future, a greener, cleaner, more connected world. And that would make even George Jetson proud. Clayton Sandell, ABC News Live, Denver. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.